at some point in every anime fan's career, they decide to take the plunge into the weed pool and visit the land of the rising sun for themselves. When you first start to plan your trip, it's really easy to get absolutely overwhelmed with the amount of things to see, do, and most importantly taste. So I'm here today as the resident Japan expert to share my personal experiences and help you decide what's worth your precious time and what's a waste of your dime. So in no particular order, let's begin. Just to give you guys a heads up, this list is a little biased to my personal opinions, which are mainly just a passionate, burning hate for waiting in line and being cramped into really tight places just to go, ooh, ah. Uh. So with that in mind, let's get to the first location. Number five, it's better live. The Studio Ghibli Museum is one of the only locations that I'd recommend to anyone, no matter how much experience they have with anime. From a total expert to someone who still thinks we all live in our mom's basement wasting our lives watching Chinese cartoons. What? This isn't a basement? Look, I do get some sunlight, though it does burn a little bit. But just about anyone will be able to find some enjoyment out of this magical museum, making it by far the most important stop on your trip. If you've watched the anime expedition, <coughs> which I highly recommend you do, you'll already know that this is one of my absolute favorite places in all of Japan. They don't allow any photography inside, but honestly I think that's for the best because this is something you definitely need to experience for yourself. The building was designed by Studio Ghibli founder Hayao Miyazaki's eldest son, Goro Miyazaki, who did a perfect job at channeling the spirit of Studio Ghibli films into every inch of the museum and the surrounding area. The museum houses about a dozen exhibits, some that just show original Studio Ghibli concept art, but others that showcase pre-film animation devices like a zoetrope. Along with your entry fee to the museum, you'll receive a movie ticket made out of Ghibli film strips that grants you access to a beautiful Ghibli movie theater that screens original short films that you can't watch anywhere else. Located in Inokashira Park in Mitaka, it's only a half hour long journey from downtown Tokyo. Unfortunately, they only sell a very limited amount of tickets each day, and they sell out months in advance, so make sure to channel your inner light Yagami and plan 30 convoluted moves ahead. I'll take a potato chip and eat it. Number 4. Hit the stores. There's only one place in the world that draws in anime fans like a moth to a flame. Or should I say a weeb to a maid, because of course we're talking about- <laughs> the only city in the world that is based entirely around selling anime merch and being meowed at by cats. Okay, maybe they also sell electronics and stuff, but mostly the merchant cats. Mostly the merchant cats? <laughs> Walking through the streets at night is a phantasmagorical experience, which is totally a real word and not something I had to google just so I could describe Akihabara. You'll be absolutely bombarded with giant lights, screens, and billboards advertising anime everywhere you look and people trying to entice you into their cafes on every corner. I recommend you learn the phrase Kiyo wa gomene neko, which roughly translates to sorry cat, not today, which you'll have to use several hundred times during your stay. If you do manage to build up enough courage to brave one of these skyscraping merch shops, you'll be greeted with endless aisles and floors of just about every piece of anime merch you could imagine. And although I'm no expert, while I was there I did have a hard time finding merch for more niche shows, so if you have something specific in mind, make sure you've got several hours blocked off to visit these heavenly stores. You may recognize Akihabara as the home to everyone's favorite gang of otakus. Otaku? Otakai. The future gadget lab. So if you're a fan of Steins Gate, make sure to stop in at the anime-themed Cafe Mailish, which is modeled entirely around the May Queen Nyan Nyan from the show. Number 3. Channel your inner Kaonashi while you take a dip in the Dogo Onsen. One of the most iconic cultural experiences you can have in Japan is visiting an authentic onsen. Thanks to the countless images online, both humans and monkeys alike travel from all across the globe to submerge themselves into piping hot springs and brew some Ningen Cha. That's why this destination is perfect for the anime fan incognito. You can easily convince all your normie friends to come to the Dogo Onsen for its architectural beauty, relaxing baths, and historical significance. As the Dogo Onsen is said to be Japan's oldest hot springs, with a history spanning back over a thousand years. Little do they know that they just converted to weebdom and went on an anime expedition to the building that inspired Abu Raya, the bathhouse in Studio Ghibli Spirited Away. Located in Matsuyama, visiting Dogo Onsen will take you pretty far out of your way, but if there's one thing I learned from my experience in Japan, it's that the more off the beaten track you go, the more rewarding of experiences you'll have. So 
No matter how intimidating it might be, I highly recommend you make an effort to explore unknown areas. The entrance fee is a measly 420 yen, and shockingly they do allow people in who are of the tattooed variety, which is super rare in Japan, so you have absolutely no excuse not to add a stop at the Dogo Onsen into your next trip to Japan. Number 2. Don't just pass through, visit Ritsu. If you're a fan of Keon, the Toyosato Elementary School is an absolute must. And if you're not a fan, reflect on your decisions that made you hate joy. The majority of people traveling to Japan for the first time will visit its two most iconic cities, Tokyo and Kyoto. And by far the most convenient way to travel between these two destinations is via Shinkansen. What I recommend doing is waking up early enough to catch the first train out of Tokyo. Now I'm guessing I already lost most of you at this point who plan to spend your Tokyo nights wandering the streets with a strong zero in each hand, but don't say goodbye to Kieran just yet, because if you follow my itinerary, you'll have plenty of time to nurse your hangover on the train. Chugga chugga choose your seat wisely because you're gonna want to sit on the right side of the train so that you get those beautiful views of Mount Fuji as you pass. Rather than riding straight through to Kyoto, ask the conductor to slow down a bit so you can tuck and roll out into the Shiga prefecture at Maibara Station to be exact. At this point you're not in Kansas anymore and you will notice a very severe lack of English. Stay calm, take a deep breath, follow signs for the Omi Tetsudo line where you'll find a very nice old man selling tickets. The pricing depends on how far you're going so make sure you practice saying Toyosato so you don't sound as dumb as I do. Once on the train hold on to your ticket because you'll have to hand it to the conductor as you get off. Make sure not to miss your stop like I may or may not have because this train only runs in one direction at a time. So by the time it swings back around, you'd have been better off walking. If you've made it this far, congratulations. Your reward is exploring an abandoned elementary school turned Kaon Museum. There is no entrance fee or staff really, so just walk on in and explore the iconic classrooms. Make sure to stop in at the gift shop on your way out, where you'll find a merch museum housing everything from the club's instruments to a Hatsune Miku crossover. The reason I recommend stopping in at Toyosato on your way to Kyoto rather than making it a day trip is because it saves you a couple hours train ride from Kyoto there and back that you could otherwise be spending exploring Japan. Number 1. Grab a hot curry bun at the Gundam Cafe in Odaiba. This area has a little something for everyone. And also a big something for everyone because you'd have to be a real Grinch not to appreciate a giant robot that lights up and plays music as it transforms. <laughs> The reason Odaiba made the list is because of its density of cool things to see. If you're a fan of Gundam, then there's the cafe, museum, and statue. But aside from that, there's the Mori Digital Art Museum, Pallet Town Ferris Wheel, Tokyo Joy Palace, Rainbow Bridge, as seen in Weathering With You, Venus Fort Mall, Mega Web Car Theme Park, and Mother <laughs> Lady Liberty. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Scratch that trip to New York off your bucket list because there's no point going now. If you're looking for an action-packed day, there's no better bang for your buck than Odaiba. And while you're in the area, why not finish your day off like Origero did at the Kasai Rinkai Park? A beautiful and free space to check out some fish, ride a little train, and watch the sunset. And now for some honorable mentions. These didn't make the list either because I'm just not a fan of the anime, or as I mentioned before, I'm really not much of an ooer or an ar, but hey, I don't discriminate, so if you feel so inclined, why not visit Otome Road, Nakano Broadway, Captain Tsubasa Town, J World Tokyo, the Pokemon Center, One Piece Tower, or if you're a fan of anime's know-it-all older cousin, there's the Kyoto International Manga Museum. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anything I missed, please let me know in the comments because I'd love to find some new places to visit on my next trip to Japan. And if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, ooh, ah, hug your wife, hug your waifu, whatever you want, I don't judge.